Good morning, everyone. Today on Perspectives, we're talking about what's being called a serious health concern by state and federal health officials. E-cigarettes and other vaping devices, they say, are causing respiratory illnesses. Now, this comes after the state of Alabama put stricter laws on the books to keep vaping products away from teens and our children. Now, the Centers for Disease Control investigating a cluster of severe pulmonary diseases among people who use e-cigarettes or who vape. Health officials say that there are now more than 150 cases reported in 16 states. The Alabama Department of Public Health has joined other state health departments in requesting that all health care providers report any case of suspected serious respiratory illness from patients who are using the e-cigarette devices. The CDC says that while e-cigarettes have the potential to benefit adult smokers who are trying to kick the habit, they warn, though, that scientists still have a lot to learn about whether e-cigarettes are really that effective. They also warn that vaping is not safe for children, young adults, or pregnant women. Now, keeping e-cigarettes out of the hands of our children is what led to the passage of the Stringer Drummond Vaping Act in the Alabama State Legislature. Fox 10 News reporter Tyler Fingert filed this report on July 31st, hours before the new law went into effect. For years, vaping products have been labeled the safer way to smoke. But experts say in the case of children, nicotine should be avoided altogether. Though we have seen tobacco go down, the use of tobacco to go down, vaping has become somewhat of an epidemic, especially as it relates to our young people. The new law that goes into effect at midnight bans the sale of vaping and nicotine products to anyone under 19. And if a retailer violates that, they could face a fine or jail time. We didn't want something on the on the books or on the, uh, as a law that just says it's against the law, but there was nothing to back it up. The new law will also require vape shops to have a tobacco license, prohibits advertising vaping as a healthy option to replace smoking, and won't allow the sale of the products near schools, libraries, or parks. Anything that we can do as legislators to legislate uh, something that will, will protect the health and welfare of our children. I stand ready to do it. And as we mentioned at the top of the program, the federal government is now looking into pulmonary disease that may be caused by vaping. Of particular concern, officials say that most of the cases reported are among adolescents and young adults. Here this morning to talk about Alabama's new vaping law are the co-sponsors of the legislation, State Representative Barbara Drummond of House District 103 and State Representative Shane Stringer of Alabama House District 102. Now, later in the program this morning, we'll also talk with Virginia Guy, Executive Director of the Drug Education Council of Mobile. Ms. Guy will have more on the efforts to educate our young people on the dangers of e-cigarettes and vaping. Now, of particular concern are reports that some are using vaping equipment for smoking a more potent form of marijuana. Throughout today's program, you'll also hear opinions from folks in the community about the use of e-cigarettes and if they are for or against the product. More on the new anti-vaping law as well when Perspective returns. Yeah, I'd be outlawed. For all ages? All ages. Okay. And tell me why you think that. Because it's dangerous. Simple as that. And welcome back to Perspectives. Here this morning, two people who hope to keep vaping devices out of the hands of our children. They are the co-sponsors of Alabama's new vaping legislation. State Representative Barbara Drummond of House District 103, as mentioned, and State Representative Shane Stringer of Alabama House District 102. We thank you both for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. What led to this? Of course, we're hearing more about vaping and we're hearing some concerns about the illnesses, but not a major number of people affected. But what happened to motivate you all to come together and put this in place for the state of Alabama? Well, for, for me, and I, I think Shane as well, we, we, we are elated that we have a, a drug education council here locally that educate our children on the dangers of all of these items. And, and they were the ones who came to us, but also for me personally, I'd been introduced 
to these devices by one of my little Sunday school students and I, I have to admit that I don't know if it was being older or just being very, very not smart. I thought it was a zip drive into a computer so I didn't know what it was. It's susceptible looking. Yeah, it, it, was, it was very susceptible. Uh -huh. And so when our Drug Education Council pulled our local legislative delegation together and I'm sitting there and, and the problem was right there in front of me and I'm sure it's that way with everybody else. That's right. And, and I had been contacted by nearly all of the schools in my district uh, asking me to please address this issue that there had been, a, they were seeing an increase and it had become an epidemic in our school systems. And um, when the Drug Education Council called us in, you know, it was a perfect time for Representative Drummond and I to join forces and, and work to try to protect our children. How difficult was it to take it from that coming together to getting things moving up in Montgomery? It was tough. It was tough, but, but, but what we saw from the, the initial standpoint, it was a nonpartisan issue. And, and I think having both of us from each of our parties probably helped. Uh, we had probably, as, as Shane and I talk about this sometimes, we had every special interest group that was against this bill. So but, even in the state here, they are a strong force. Uh, they're a very strong force, but they could not ignore the fact that this is a health hazard That's right. to our children. And the two of, us, two of us kept it in the forefront that this was not about political affiliations or politicking or special interests. It was about the health and the welfare of our children. We worked with all of these groups uh, to address their issues and when it, when it became time that it, there were things that we did not want out of the bill, we, we held fast and they knew that we were building support. And so I have to say that both Democrats and Republican worked very hard on this bill, and I think it helped because it was a nonpartisan bill. So this is an Alabama bill concerned right. about Alabama children. That's right. And you had a lot of contact from schools up in the northern part of the state. That's right. Um, we were uh, we received a lot of help from different uh, school systems and uh, the superintendents associations and different groups from all over the state that was that was highly interested in this and really took a vested interest in helping us and you know giving us uh, getting us the facts that we needed to present to help get this bill passed. So how does it work? How's it going to help us? Well, for one, it's going to make it against the law for any young person under the age of 19 to be sold these devices. And it's going to be administered by the ABC Board of the State of Alabama before a kid could walk into a convenience store and, and buy those devices, and it was not against the law. So we have sort of set the standards. Now, for for us, we, we, we've been talking, it has not gone far enough, and, and that's where our job is not over. We're going to continue to do things to enhance upon the bill because one of the things that we've seen though we've had AEA the Superintendents Association all of the education affiliates as well as the Cancer Society the Heart Association all joined in mm -hmm. there are many parents out here who don't know anything about these devices. And so one of the things Shane and I have been talking about is that we've got to come up with a way that we can make the vaping industry help us to educate parents and those folks out there who don't know what these devices are, what the harmful effects. I mean, one of the things when we were pushing the bill at our own USA hospital, mm -hmm. University Hospital, we got a call from one of the, the administrators over there and said, you know, representative, We've had nine burn cases because some of those have batteries on them. And so because this is such a health crisis, we've got to continue to push for more education on what these de vaping devices are. And also hopefully our ind the industry as well as old in health care will do research to find out what the harmful effects are. Right, that's one of the sad things is that it's so early in the game that's that we right. don't have the long term evidence. But at the same time, you're hearing from parents who who we're saying weren't educated about what exactly is going on here with these devices. 
That's right. At the very beginning, when these uh, devices first started coming out, they were being sold as safer alternatives to smoking and uh, ways to kick the habit of, of addiction of cigarettes, when actually it's not the case. Uh, some of these devices have five times the amount of nicotine that cigarettes have in them. So, you know, we've got to get the facts out there and, and the truth to the uh, citizens to let them know what's going on. Uh, one of the concerns is, is the health risks. We, we, they just have not been out long enough for us to know the full. We don't want to be finding out, you know, by, by means of children getting cancer or, or lung diseases. So is this a situation of where for many years the tobacco industry didn't share all of the information with us? Is this happening at the beginning of this whole vaping situation too? I'm not so sure the tobacco industry knows the effect or what the long-term effects uh, from vape vaping. I, I, they're the ones who created these devices to help curb tobacco use and what we've seen is tobacco use has increased among teens. Um, so I, I don't think I don't think anybody know right now what the long-term effects of these vaping devices. We're seeing residual effects you know like in Oregon. They, they have now detected there is a young person who died of a respiratory lung disease and you're seeing other effects of it and and what we're wanting to do here in the state of Alabama is not to be behind the curve but before the curve so that we can make sure that the teens in Alabama are, are safeguarded and and we're hopeful that now that we have put this on the forefront that we will have researchers from our various research hospitals to start looking at the effect of vaping not only only on the industry, especially for our young people, because you know when you, you reach my age, you get to make your own choices. Right. But it's somebody who is members. under 19, right. those choices need to be made for them, especially as it relates to to health. And you've seen such a skyrocketing increase among young people. We needed to regulate it right. here in Alabama. Well, we thank you so much for being here today to talk about this and get the information out about the new law. And we're going to come back with Virginia Guy to join us. And then after that, we'll come back again and share more information about how this is uh, making a difference in the state of Alabama. Up next, as mentioned, Virginia Guy of Mobile's Drug Education Council. Now, she has some disturbing information as to how vaping devices are being used with illegal drug use. Plus, she updates us on a continued anti-vaping campaign targeting young people. As we go to the break this morning, we hear more of your opinions on the vaping craze. In my personal opinion, no one should smoke, but <laughs> um, I guess each his own. It should be a, a situation where it should be an adult situation. I think 21 would be the favorable age that when people are going to do something like that in terms of substituting smoking, that should be the preferable age. It's not been tested. We don't know long term. And so to allow the, the young people, the teenagers, to, to have a lot of access to the vaping when we don't know what the long term damage is, then I'm, I'm not for it. So I would definitely want there to be some kind of restrictions. And welcome back this morning. We're talking about vaping and Virginia Guy, Executive Director of Mobile's Drug Education Council joins us this morning to talk more about this. And you've been always first in line on that battlefront, so to speak, of dealing with some of the issues that we're concerned about for our young people, as both Representative Drummond and Stringer mentioned, concerned about Alabama's youth. How long have we been dealing with this? I remember I was telling you back in 2009 at a football game at one of the local stadiums, this vaping thing being blown all around us and in our faces, but of course, smoking wasn't allowed, but no one knew how to address this thing at that time. Right, when, the, when these devices were first developed, they were used for smoking cessation. And so they weren't regulated because we wanted to make sure that anybody trying to quit tobacco use um, had access to them. What we didn't realize is that a lot of people, instead of using them as smoking uh, cessation devices, actually used them as smoking replacement devices. Mm -hmm. And so companies and hospitals, you know, industry had to rewrite their um, employees 
Hawaii policies about tobacco use to include the e-cigarettes and the vaping. Then um, the new device was developed that um, is the is the one that looks like a USB port mm -hmm. that yeah. um, suddenly this um, young people started because you have to admit this is pretty cool. It, it charges on your computer My and um, so this came on the scene and at, for years we had been really good in our country about reducing tobacco use by young people. When this device hit the market, um, tobacco use, nicotine use uh, by young people just skyrocketed. And it really got to be an epidemic. Schools were calling us, uh, people were really concerned. So we're thrilled that um, our local legislative delegation sort of carried the torch for the entire state of Alabama to sponsor this legislation to align these products the same as other tobacco products so that our kids can be safer. Now, is this one of the ones that also can have uh, introduction of illegal drug? Right. See, well. that's a, that's another thing with the um, you know with with marijuana and particularly medical marijuana you know moving across the country. A lot of the um, the way to use that is through vaping, and um, you know nebulizers and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. these are kind of a prime target for liquid THC to be put in these. And when liquid THC is in these, it doesn't smell like you know traditional uh, burning of a of a of a traditional marijuana. Yeah. yeah. Smell. So. So it's, it's real problematic for educators and schools and parents. So we're trying to educate um, all adults in our community to look out for these devices. Um, there are some that are kind of flat, that mm -hmm. they're, they're in all kinds of um, forms. That's so that, that looks right. like a compact yeah, of the ladies first. They, they do. So mm -hmm. we want parents and, and educators to know what these look like and to talk to their young people about them. A lot of kids don't believe that these even, that they're harmful at all. They, they believe that it's just water vapor when actually in these devices there's no water mm -hmm. you know the main chemical is propylene glycol which is you know used in a, a lot of industrial applications mm -hmm. and very very dangerous when you um, run it over a battery to heat it and then put it in our lungs it's our lungs just aren't meant to that's scary as you're describing that and also I understand a high nicotine content as well for some of the liquids that are used right this little pod right here has uh, more than a pack of um, a pack of more nicotine in it than a pack of uh, cigarettes. So, you know, we've had stories of, of you know, kids smoking two to three pods a day, which means that My they're goodness. almost like a two to three pack a day, you know, smoker. So we're seeing a lot of damage. And, you know, we're hearing stories in the national media about mm -hmm. the dangers um, of, of these products with, with teenagers. But we've had a lot of local right uh, here. stories, right, where they've had pulmonary issues and lung problems because of the use of these products. How quickly does that develop so that both the young person and the parent would be aware. You know, th it's so early. You know, these. You know, I hate to think of our kids kind of being used as lab rats, but this is like mm. a big experiment. And so, our our advice right now to all teenagers, young people, and pregnant women is: don't use these devices at all. We really need a lot more research and a lot more, um, you know, information about the, you know, what these products really will do long term. And it's just too early to know that. Yet the then, science hadn't caught up with us. Right, then they've had some of the designer features of different fragrances, and um, I guess some of the aromas would be different, and that has also been a draw to getting people involved with this. Right, the flavors are real problematic. Um, you know, there are some states that have outlawed some of the flavors, and um, you know, because the flavors, a lot of them do appeal to younger people, mm -hmm. so it makes it more attractive to a young person to start experimenting and using um, these products. Well, Virginia, we're going to have uh, both of our representatives join us back here on the set as we talk more about that when we come back this morning. And still ahead, some of more of your opinions on vaping and, <coughs> excuse me, e-cigarettes. And as mentioned, both Representative Stringer and Drummond return as well. More perspectives in just a moment. I don't think some things that uh, the state or anybody should make those decisions for those people. And so I would just say, I think it depends on, and I don't know how you would measure that, it depends on their, their maturity. So sometimes they're ready for things, and this generation is, I mean, they're exposed to everything anyway. The vaping to me, I mean, it, you know, your lungs, uh, they're, not, not, they're not for anything in them but air. And we're back again, joined by Virginia Guy, Executive Director of Mobile's Drug Education Council, along with our state representatives, both Shane Stringer and Barbara Drummond. Once again, I guess we look at the whole picture and we say that 
parents, number one, need to be very aware of what's going on. And of course, as we look at the different devices, they are deceptive in the approach because if you didn't smell anything, you wouldn't really know but just by looking at the products. That's right, and um, we're available to do uh, programs with um, schools, churches, parents, educators, any community group to learn more about these type of devices and how they can help protect their young people from using them. And you both have that concern about the young people, especially the teens and preteens who are experimenting with these things. You know, for, for, for me, I just want to make sure not only that the parents, but kids know what is going into their bodies. And right now, we don't know. And so the best approach is, is if you see what this is doing nationally and, and you don't know what the effects are going to be in the long range. So we need to make sure that our kids are educated, but most importantly for me, I want to make sure the entire community in the state of Alabama is educated on the woes of these devices because there's going to be long-term effects that we're going to have to deal with uh, in healthcare industry mm -hmm. as a result of these. That's right. And, and I'm, you know, would reiterate what Ms. Guy said. This is like a big experiment, and, mm -hmm. and who wants their children being experimented on? So, you know, they need to really pay attention to this, and, and let's wait and see what the uh, long term effects are before, you know, before we're deeming these things safe or a mm -hmm. safer alternative to smoking. So we're a long away from that research being conclusive. Do each of the products have a, a smell, a, an aroma, or something that's blown out in the smoke? Because I noticed on some of the video we show, some have very limited amounts of smoke, and others, of course, we've seen them blowing out of somebody's car window, looks like the car's on, uh, right. overheating or something, right. you know. Right. So they don't have as much of an odor as you would think they do. Some of them do. In fact, you know, just the, the devices that are sitting there, you can kind of smell a little bit of it. But, mm -hmm. um, the Jewel particularly has very little odor to it. And this is the one, again, that you were reiterating that uh, it looks very deceptive right. in its approach. Uh, Representative Drummond, is this the one that you were thinking was a computer e e Exactly. <coughs> and if you look at the flavors that they are selling, mm -hmm. they're, they're flavors that you could perhaps go to the ice cream shop and get <laughs> as well. So you know that they're attracting young people. And so th that's one of the things that we've got to continue to look at here statewide in legislation are the flavors. I mean, you've seen Michigan, their governor this yes. morning announced that she was banning those flavors altogether. For six months, right? For six months, because they're very deceptive. And, and you know, they got tutti frutti and those kinds of flavors mm -hmm. that young people would automatically be attracted to. So almost like those designer approach to giving alternatives, but yet it's not, I think you said a replacement instead of a That's alternative. Right. Cessation, right. Right, and that, that's troubling. You know, we, um, we want anybody who started smoking years ago and is really trying to, to quit. Um, you know, we've got the Quit Now uh, line in the state of Alabama that's very effective where you can get um, excellent help to quit smoking. So there's a lot of good ways that are available to the community mm -hmm. to quit smoking. Yeah. Representative Stringer, I guess we should go back to the old fashioned way. When we see someone doing this now, we need to say something and just how would you approach somebody like that? Yeah, just asking them to please uh, evaluate the dangers of this and, and Google it. You can see the different uh, the different health issues that's coming up across the country. Like Ms. Guy said, we're, we're facing it right here in our local hospitals where uh, people yes. are being diagnosed with lung disorders and, and issues from these devices. So we've got to talk up more as the media and to help as we do all of this together to educate our public. Representative Barbara Drummond and Representative Shane Stringer, we thank you so much for doing what you've done to make this happen. And of course, Executive Director of our Drug Education Council, Virginia Guy, for being on the forefront of bringing this to the attention of all of us. Thank you. We thank you so much for that. And of course, for more information on national medical concerns regarding e-cigarette or vaping usage, check out the websites for the Centers for Disease Control and of course, the Alabama Department of Public Health as well. Now you can also contact the Drug Education Council in Mobile, as Ms. Guy mentioned, at the number you see there on the screen for coming to your school or your organization or your church to give you more information and education on vaping. Well, join us here next weekend at 7.30 for Perspectives as we continue to discuss important issues and seek solutions. Now, if you have any ideas of topics you'd like to for us to address, definitely drop us a line. I'm Eric Reynolds. Have a great week.